What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you're listening to Liquid Carnage. My friend, we are close. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Very close. I did the numbers. I did the tracking. Uh, this episode is 199. Oh. Our next episode will be episode 200. Wow. That's like 40 years old in, in human years. Almost. Oh, my gosh. Well, think about it. That would be 20 years of a 10 episode series on Netflix. Oh, my. Oh, or Disney Plus, for that fact. I, I mean, mean how, so, yes. How many How many of your favorite TV shows have gone over 200 episodes? The only ones I can, ever, I can think of off the top of my head are Friends, uh, MASH. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. And maybe How I Met Your Mother. They're right on the cusp. Yeah, maybe they're right on the cusp. Yeah. Bang, Big Bang Theory might have. Big Bang Theory had it, yeah. You got to figure 24 episodes a year, 2022 to 24 at 10 years. That's usually the mark. Cheers, of course. And I'm sure Frazier had the same kind. Oh, my God. The Simpsons is still going, dude. Yeah. You know, is it, though? Well, I don't watch it, but. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I I can literally say I checked on The Simpsons 20 years ago, and that was still 15 seasons in, it feels like. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. man. But I'll, yeah, so I'll, we're hitting 200 episodes, my friend. Oh, my gosh. That's so many changes have happened over the last four years. And look at us go, man. Just keep it on trucking. And the executive producer has been a part of every single episode, man. Since, since day uno. Day uno. In fact, I think that I've kept every single note from the executive producer on my phone. So I think if I were to go through those, I have the very first um story that he put on there or the first notes he put notes. on there oh yeah I, I i'd say i have the same thing too because that's one of the nice things about being an apple product and having an old apple chat when you text in blue you know it's true uh you can save all those things and it's cool man to see how far how far back we've gone and how far we've come along since then too oh yeah yeah no i i mean we and considering that i mean like i said last time i consider the countries that we've been to and the states that we've been to, I think we've been in every state but two. And I, I, I think one of them is West Virginia. There, there's only been two, one or two states that we haven't been in. Um, and the rest of the, sta- the states we've been in, we've been in Canada, we've been in Mexico and South America, we've been in Asia and Russia and Australia. I mean, so it, it's a testimony. It's a testimony. I mean, you, got to, you have to admit, like, liquid courage is literally worldwide. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, mean, I don't know. I don't think it gets us anywhere, but it's it's worldwide. So that's that's just a fun thing to to think about in in the giant world that we live in, that people we've never met and will most likely never meet uh, have taken the time to download our podcast and spend thirty minutes theoretically with us, uh, listen to whatever nonsense they thought was funny. And you know, I'm going to bet they downloaded Avril no. Lavigne and the Lizard People. Yeah, that's one of our most popular. We we've uh, I I feel really touched though that uh, remembering Ralph has been one of our most popular episodes as well. Yeah, it's only just people keep listening to it or spread it to friends of friends. And when you have when you have a friend that you know we had seventy or seventy five listeners now listen to that podcast, um, it, it's it's special. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I th- I think it it really hits home in a lot of different ways that. You know, everyone goes through that kind of loss in life at some point and always where be it expected or unexpected and how you deal with it. Um, it's different for everybody. And, and that's a nice way to process it, you know. Well, I had an interesting thing happen to me this weekend. Um, oh, good. And I, I, we might digress off of off of uh, the pre-discussed topics. But, you know, sometimes you have a profound thing that happens to you that mm-hmm. you just it just sticks in your mind. So um, I just finished a book. And I think I might have talked about it a little bit, but one of the one of the premises, the main premise of the book is with all the advancement and advancements in technology and science that are supposed to be making our lives easier. It's Mm -hmm. actually made our lives more difficult. Right. And his premise is, is that the reason why it's more difficult is that the science and technology separates us from nature, the spirit, nature and, you know, things that are bigger than us. Yes. So I finished that book finally this week, and it was a 2,200-page book, and I finally finished it after a month of reading. And you know me, Scott. I love to read, but I like to keep my books done in a week. So when mm-hmm. I put in four weeks in a book, I'm ready to smoke a cigarette, you know, and, yeah. and just, like, celebrate. Yeah, you're but done. Anyways, yeah. So, so 
one of the one of the key things that he says that you know he he recommends in the book and you know you can take the recommendation for what it is is that basically each of us has to come to terms that our life might our life's ledger might be out of balance and we might need to give back to the spirit or nature um, to kind of rebalance ourselves that that sure. that rebalancing will help us get kind of over some of the stresses and chaos that we are self-imposed right you're talking so, about karma uh kind of like a karma yeah he called it a he called he called it basically living in the gift and recognizing that you know when you take and take and take your ledger is out of balance and you need to give back to get it back into balance it's that's a nice way of looking at it but yeah i, I think if you really want to break it down in layman's terms that's just karma you get what you give and if right. you if you if you give too much uh, you'll never allow yourself to get, but if you get too much, you might never think uh, about the idea of giving. Or, or if you take too much, like there's some selfish people that they just take and they oh, never yeah. give back. And you know, anyways. So as I'm walking, I'm walking uh, down a street near my house that's right on the. Uh, it, it's right along a uh, like a, a Christian university or a Christian academy. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking down the street, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, gosh, darn it. Like, how do you get, how do you start balancing a ledger? I mean, how do you do that? And how would I, how would I do that? And as I'm walking by, I see a caged, like a, a, a chain link fence, maybe four feet by three feet. And then a top on this chain. And it's what it's doing. It's, it's guarding or protecting the main water main for the, the academy. Mm hmm but in this encagement, there is a bird that is stuck in the encagement. Uh -huh. I don't know how it could have gotten in there because I looked and the, the gate where it was latched, like the latch for the gate was locked. And there was a very small opening for this bird to get into. Right. But the bird got in there and he couldn't get out. So I just instantly I, I ran to the school. It was closed because it was a Saturday. But they had a security number. So I called security of the school and said, hey, look, I don't know if you have this capability, but can you unlock this cage because there's a bird in there? Scott, the guy said, you know what? I went by that place like five minutes ago and there was no bird. Mm. He went over. He said he, well, is, he is that is that the, the rules of engagement? Is that what that is? The guy just blew it right, blew up, blew it off. I don't know. I mean, I'm only going by what he said, but he said he just was by there five minutes ago and the bird wasn't there. Oh. So, now, so. I, he goes, he lets the bird out and basically the bird escaped. Mm -hmm. So I thought, man, I feel really good. Like I, I, I was able to save this bird and give a little bit back to this bird's life, yada, yada. But the weird thing about it, Scott, is now this is the other part of the story that makes me get into weird like spiritual stuff. So I was supposed to walk 15 minutes earlier, but instead I decided to walk the dogs around the block first and then go walk. If I had walked 15 minutes earlier, and if we were to hold true that the guy drove by five minutes earlier and the bird wasn't there, I never would have saw the bird. Yeah, and the bird would have been locked because I would have already walked past the bird. The bird would have been locked in that cage May mm -hmm. have died, but may not have been rescued till later that day or tomorrow or Monday. You know, that's a very good point. Things happen for a reason. I mean, yeah, you know, like I said, I was going to go for the walk. And then I said, you know, what? let me walk the dogs first, give them a little exercise. And I was 15 minutes to do that. And then I started walking and coupling that with, oh, the bird wasn't in there five minutes ago. It, it just it kind of said, man, is the spirits is the spiritual world talking to me like, Hey man, you want to balance? You want to get your ledgers back in order? Here, play that's, with this a little bit. That's it, man. Like I said, that would be called the rules of engagement in your scenario. Um, but also, I'd ask, did you know why the cage bird sings? No. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I had no. I had I, I had I had a very witty pun right there, and and a fun little joke. But I'm turning into my grandpa the older I get. Well, I, you're taking a serious uh, uh, um, euphoric story of mine about how I'm getting in touch with the nature and spiritual world, and you pun it down. Wow. I, I, wow. Well, I didn't pun it down, Ace Ventura. You pun it trying to, down. I, I'm just saying. It's, it's, it's a very sweet story. Don't get me wrong. But there's some very easy, low-hanging fruit jokes there that if you, if you weren't paying attention, you clearly missed. Well, the other thing, too, is, is if I would have been in a car... I wouldn't have saw the bird. No, 
I don't even know if I would have been on a bicycle and riding on the road if I would have saw the bird. It just happened to be everything kind of came into alignment. So it got me thinking, I mean, is it one of those things like you said, karma, you ask for it and it re- you you get it, you you put it out there and it comes back to you? Yeah. I, I mean, I would think so. I mean, have you ever you, had something like that happen to you or oh, that yeah, you can I, remember? I, I, yeah, it happens a lot, man. It's it's I feel like if you go back to an old Seinfeld episode where they talk about, you know, uh, even Steven, like Jerry threw 20 bucks out the wall out of the, the window and he looked at his, his pocket and he found 20 bucks. Do you remember that episode? I sure do. And I kind of feel like, you know, that's kind of what you want karma to be is even Steven, even Steven. You don't necessarily uh, want to get too far ahead, but you don't want to get too far behind. And I, I think with, with what I do for professionally, I, I kind of walk that line pretty, pretty solidly. It's like, you know, you have a lot of wins, you have a lot of losses, but ultimately uh, you have to be trying to make this world a better place, you know? Yeah. I, I got to thinking when I got back to, um, when I got back home, I told Noreen about the story and um, I don't know if I told you that, that we talked to a medium recently because her mother yeah, just yeah. passed away. And the, the medium had said that um, her mother comes in the form of birds. Mm-hmm. And, and I got to thinking, it's like, you know, if you believe something enough, does it make it true? Like, if you, if you believe that, yeah, the mother came to me in the form of this bird to teach me a lesson or give me an opportunity to, you know, process what I was thinking on my walk, does that make it true? Yeah, that's, and that's the case where... There are certain there are certain truths in life you can't deny, but there there are other truths that are probably more of a gray area that if you believe them to be true, uh, whether they apply to anybody else in this world or not, those are indeed facts. That is so interesting that you say that, Scott. OK, I'm sorry. I'm going to digress now off the bird, but keep the keep the bird puns coming because they're. Well, oh, no, but I, I had a walking story, too. I was going to throw in there. Oh, then go ahead. I, I had before we before we get into our main topic today. I also had a very random uh, experience out of my morning walks right now. I, uh, I'm not allowed to work out right now. Uh, I've got a heart monitor on that is preventing me from going to the gym, so I'm just trying to do lighter work. Stay moving, yeah. So uh, I'm connected to this heart monitor is connected to a cell phone. Where if if the monitor uh, gets a little bit too far away from my my chest when I sleep, like the the sticky stuff starts to fade. Uh, the phone beeps oh okay so it, and it beeps obnoxiously until you hit the button it's clear make sure everything's secured to your body so uh, about four thirty, five o'clock saturday morning uh, apparently the the thing got loose so i was up it's one of those it was it was close up to when i normally wake up uh the thing started beeping i just couldn't get settled so it was still still dark out about five thirty, you know six o'clock still uh, i started i just went to go do a loop around uh, my neighborhood and I was coming back and I was just kind of watching the sky and I, you can kind of see some clouds but not a lot of clouds and I, and I saw this random straight light in the air in the sky it was, it was literally a, a straight light and I was like is that the moon like it just not peeking through the, the clouds but there was no real distortion there was no it was just a, a straight symmetrical line And I noticed it started moving pretty fast. And I I just kind of watched it. And I was walking down airway uh, heading west for, for, so your reference, right about a block away from the turnoff to my house. Yeah. And I I looked at, I just started looking. I was like, I can't tell because it was too low to be a a, a airliner, way too low because it was flying higher than a helicopter, but lower than uh, a commercial airline. And if it looks like it, if it was an airliner, it had all the lights like lit up in a row, a, a, a right, right across it on, on that straight line. And then it just started moving a little bit faster and faster and faster until I lost it. And I, I snapped a picture of it. And like everything else, when you get a picture, it does not look the same. All these cameras and technologies that we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I got excited. Like Janice woke up. I was like, I was like hey, I got to tell you what I saw because I'm not sure what it was. And I showed her a picture, and it just looks like a flash in the, in the sky. It was, it was kind of embarrassing, but I, I swear I saw something, and it was tracking across the sky, and it was it was lights, and it was about six a.m. on Saturday morning. Wow, I, I know. What, remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about that that you know the, the the beauty of something does not mean it has to be permanent. 
Like you got yes. that one moment because you were aware and, and there, but it was, it's not something you can take a picture of it. You can't hold on to it. You can't, it's, it's gone. Yeah. And I literally, but it doesn't take, take away from the power of that moment. That is so cool. Yeah. No, I literally tried to take a picture of it and I got a picture of it, but he just can't tell what it is. Mm-hmm. And then I just kept thinking to myself, well, if that was a UFO, if not saying it was, I, I wonder if the aliens locked their doors driving through this part of the state, the country, or just this part of the galaxy right now, just the way the world is. Because it's kind of a messed up world right now. We're still trying to get everything straightened out. Yeah. I mean, it, the, 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 the lines of this world, you know, it, I, I'm wondering too, maybe, maybe we call what we call UFOs is just, you know, things in our universe that we just can't explain, don't, won't be able to explain, but they happen all the time. We just can't explain it. You know, it, yeah. it, it seems like in our, in our, in our scientific world, you have to be able to understand and explain every single thing. Otherwise you can't believe it's true. Yeah. You know, that's and it. It's, it, it's something like, like that. You know what? May, maybe, it, maybe it was something that was unidentified, uh, but is as real as it may not be aliens, maybe something just on this earth that we just can't identify yet. And, and that's, and that's very, it. That, that's very true. You know, it's, like I said, it was 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning in, in the middle of March. So there's not a lot of people up. There's not a lot of movement. There's not the sun's not quite up yet, but it's still not pitch black out. So I feel like you can move around pretty, pretty loosely and and not miss a beat, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's pretty cool, man. That that's that's pretty cool. Oh, we'll see. I mean, hopefully. I don't know. I'll have to go look at that picture again. It just it looks like a little line in the sky and you realize I realize how crazy those people who try to say they saw a UFO sound and you're trying to explain it. And then the only, the only proof you have looks nothing like you need it to look like. Yeah. And, and like you said, when people try to explain what they experienced, the rational society doesn't believe them. Right. We don't believe it all. Mm. You're just you're just making that up. You want attention or, you know, yeah. no, no, it happened. It, it, it didn't take away from it happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that is my truth in this scenario. I saw that I saw that UFO on Saturday morning, and I have determined that to be a truth. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I the reason why that that kind of resonated with me is uh, I was watching a, a documentary about um, there were some ranchers that were from like southeast Nevada. Uh huh. Um, where they were having a dispute with the, the government because the government didn't want their cattle grazing on public lands if they weren't going to pay the lease to have the cattle do that. Yeah, it's about and, the Bundys. Uh, yeah, the Bundys. Thank you, the Bundys. Well, anyways, they took that um, and basically had a big standoff with the federal government. And, you know, you're not going to, you know, these are public lands that, you know, you're, you're, you're violating the constitution and they were going to fight the government on this mm-hmm. program. And one of the, the words that kept coming up uh, when they were going through this kind of resistance is he was a patriot. You know, he's a patriot. And I don't know about you, but I've heard that term used a lot lately that, you know, I have to do something because it's the patriotic thing to do. And I'm a patriot. And, but what I was frustrated with is this guy was, in all intents and purposes, he kind of was breaking yeah. the law. You know, it's like, do if we have laws, then society has established these laws, and people picking and choosing the term, well, I'm going to be a patriot and violate the law because I don't like the law. It makes me wonder: is that really the correct term of what a patriot? Means? Yeah, I get that. Um... It's interesting because you know that that term gets thrown thrown around a lot these days. Uh, a lot of people want to claim they're patriots and they want to claim that they're doing everything you know the way that our forefathers would have done it. And I have to wholeheartedly disagree with with that thought process versus what I think patriots used to be. You know, um, people today use the word patriot, and this is strictly my opinion. Uh, to fight what they deem uh, is an unjust law, you know. Um, okay. The, this this is a perfect example. It's they're an American patriot. We'll we'll define what a patriot is at that point. If if you're an American that loves your country, that does what's best for your country, and understands the history of your country, I would call that a patriot. 
you know, I would, I would say, I would call someone a Patriot that understands where we came from as a country, you know, from uh, the, the sick, the poor, all the different immigrants that, that made America great and what it is today. Uh, I, I would call that patriotism, not being a rancher fighting a law that you knew was in existence when you allowed the cattle to be there because you don't think it's fair and just. Yeah, or it's, you know, it, it chimes in on your, or, you know, it comes into on yeah. your business, you know, and, and, and I, I was, as I was listening though, I was getting enraged because you have half of the, you know, some of the people saying, oh, he's a patriot. Like he's doing what we should be doing against big government. We should fight them at all, you know, all turns. And the other part of me is saying, you know what, you, you're using public lands for your own private interest. And frankly, what if I don't want your cattle on my public land? How come you take ownership of public lands? If that belongs to all of us, then I should have a say too as to whether you should be using my land for I your agree. cattle. Um, um, you know, so so I, I was I was just like frustrated with my, you know, because you know when they talk about the capital, you know, a lot of the supporters of, you know the Trump and that movement thought that they were doing the patriotic thing by resisting the elections and storming mm-hmm. the Capitol. They were patriots, you know, they call themselves patriots. And I, it's hard for me because I don't see them as patriots. Well, um, it, I just don't see them as patriots. And, and maybe it's because my definition well, is it, incorrect it, on it, but I'm like you, there's something different between patriotism, defending, your country and and fighting for your country and fighting against your country that's not you, patriotism you, you know you, you talk but, about you talk about that scenario and it's interesting because uh those people who claim to be, who claim to be patriots uh i, I don't want to say they were brainwashed but let's be honest as as most of them are being arrested and in arraigned now if you pay attention to the news reports uh are now coming out saying that they felt like they were lied to and misled uh, between the facts and now understand how wrong they really were. But that goes back to our conversation earlier in the show, ta- uh, talking about uh, what is the truth. If, if you are yeah. unwilling yeah. to go and do the research and find out the information on, on a subject you're interested in and just taking Fox News, for instance, or, or MSNBC or what have you as the gospel, then you have no one to blame but yourself. You know? Yeah, well, <coughs> and, and I mean, the thing that, that I find so interesting is that if that would have been the Black Lives Matter group, would they have called the Black Lives Matter movement Patriot? Oh, um, I, I think just to just to yeah, clarify that Senator, I mean, Senator I, Ron I guess Johnson what I'd argue Wisconsin, is that I, uh, very openly said went on record yeah. on Saturday. And I think what, what do you say that he didn't feel threatened at all? by this uh, particular group that was storming the Capitol, but had it been a Black Lives Matter uh, protest that stormed it, he would have felt threatened. Right. And so, so you know, some might argue, well, the Black Lives Matter movement, they're patriots too, because they're fighting against a government that's, yeah. you know, that's being uh, to- intolerant to them. But it, it never works like that. You know, it's always... It's always it's only a patriot if, if it's something I believe in. But if I don't believe in it, then it's not patriotic at all. It's yeah, that's, that's exactly it's like, it. If man. you're not a patriot, if, if your side views you as a patriot, you have, you view the opposing side as domestic terrorism, essentially. And yeah, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Shouldn't shouldn't the definition of patriot be the same? I mean, well, shouldn't shouldn't that be on, the on, same? On, and and if it just because you don't like a law doesn't mean that you could. You fighting against that law makes on you paper patriot. patriotism is defined. On paper, we know what's right and what's wrong. But what's the problem with America today, though? It's the twenty four hour news cycle. It's the extreme left. It's the extreme right. It's everybody going to one extreme and forgetting about everyone that's there stuck in the middle, having to listen to all the bullshit that happens. Maybe. You know, Maybe I, I, I just, yeah, I, 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 I think I'm pretty patriotic, but I never would have told myself, you know, I'm a patriotic person. So I need to, you know, vandalize, um, stores and yeah. steal, or, uh, from stores, storm a cap or, or I'm going to go up against into the Capitol. I, I just, 
I guess I just never would have used the patriotic term uh, for, you know, for that kind of actual yeah. action. Um, but I just think it's interesting because, you, you know, we were talking about truth and and, you know, looking at it from different sides, trying to find, you know, what that is and what's real. And that's a term that it just it just stuck in my head like yeah. what, what is a patriot then i i guess i just don't know what a patriot is and i certainly um feel like you know because some would some might be able to argue then that well you know 250 years ago the united states they weren't patriots they're were domestic well, that's kind of what it right? was but but domestic terrorism right? is, so, not, is, is is you know patriotism is is at the very end of the day the way that's the country's country started was a nice word for domestic terrorism <laughs> So maybe that's just to make them feel better for doing something that the rest of society might look at as breaking the law. They justify it by, well, no, I'm just being patriotic. Yeah, being you know, patriotic. it is. And that's the problem with the world today. It's it's everything has to be so clearly defined, yet everything is so gray. And well, there there certainly is no universal no. truth. Like, I mean, like we were talking about, I mean, you know, someone who says that they were a patriot by storming the Capitol would not call Black Lives Matter people patriots. And I'm sure vice versa, that Black Lives Matter people would probably say, no, you're not a patriot if you're storming the, you yeah. know, the Capitol. You're not you're not. A, so it's just a, it's just a fine line. The other thing that, that I think about, too, is I, I just because I don't believe what you say does not make me a non-American. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make me un-American because I disagree with what you say. Um, and I get tired of that being thrown around that true Americans, you know, true Americans think this way. No, no, that's once again, that's not that's not yeah. a correct statement. That's just not, a you know, it's statement. just it's, it's an unfortunate time in, in, in our culture where everyone gets so fixated on social media. We go back to earlier in the conversation, we talk about how technology and science has ruined our, our lives to a certain extent. Uh, that's another blaring example and uh, the 24 hour news cycle. And I think those two factors have done so much to change the American psyche, let alone the worldwide psyche of how we view things. Uh, and not just that we have one uniform source, we have multiple platforms. So if you don't like the platform you're staring at, there's five more with your opinions you can go find. And yeah, it, it comes back to an old debate. We ha- I, you know, I've had about religion for years. It's, if if the Bible is is the word of God, that is the word. It should be black and white. Am I correct? Uh, I, I guess I would say that some people would agree with you that the the Bible should it's, be black and white. That whatever the Bible says, that's what that's. We I'm just do. saying if if that is in fact the word of God and what God says, God it, what what He says, it goes. That's law. That is that is you know Christian law. We should not have five to ten other offshoots of Christianity that interpret the Bible dif- the Bible differently, so people are, are uh, able to go about their business believing that they are Christians because this is how they interpret the Bible. Well, I, I will say this, kind of in, in wrapping this up, both of us experienced something over the weekend that was away from the TV. It was outside. It was not tied into any sort of technological gizmo or gadget to help us with our lives it was in nature or outside at least and we may not have experienced that had we been on our phones or on the tv that's or true anything else. that's true so all in all it was, it was so, all in all it was, a, so, it was a win i'd call that a win yeah yeah i, I helped the bird and you yeah, saw you that's great. I love it. <laughs> that's great when you put it like that which we we, i helped the bird you helped the ufo and, and, and that's why they let liquid carnage sing uh, if you had a wild weekend like we did, clearly uh, we want to hear about it. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, if you want to see pictures of the great snowstorm in Denver, our EP's first snowstorm in Denver, uh, hit him up at uh, Twitter and Instagram at Liquid underscore EP and give him some tips on how to live in the snow. Yeah, boy. I mean, they say that that might be like the one of the largest snowfalls in Denver in its history. So who knows? Maybe maybe we'll have a a wet summer uh with water from the oh that'd be the nice. rockies we have we have the okay. room we might as well use it yeah exactly yeah exactly all right brother why don't you take us home then yeah you know we kind of veered all over the place so we tried to make it a circle but yeah, i don't know if we did so well but 
Thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate you. Uh, that was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>